Dubai is said to be just one of many enablers of global corruption, crime and illicit financial flows. Addressing the Emirates' role presents complex challenges to anti-corruption practitioners, law enforcement agencies and policymakers. How does this help mafias from all over the world? Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel. Our videos are guaranteed to keep you coming back for amazing content. So, let's start with today's video. The 21st century city, Dubai is a global financial center, a shopper's paradise and an oasis for the world's well-to-do. While the vast majority of Dubai's financial, business and real estate transactions are not associated with illegal activity, a steady stream of illicit proceeds from corruption and crime underpins Dubai's prosperity. The wealth has helped to get the Emirates booming real estate market, enrich money changers, its bankers and business elites, as well as turn the city into a central gold trading hub. At the same time, both Emirati leaders and the international community continue to turn a blind eye to the problematic behaviors, administrative loopholes and weak enforcement practices that make Dubai a globally attractive destination for dirty money. In September 2020, Europol announced a significant operation against an Albanian-speaking criminal group that is said to be one of the most active in Europe's cocaine trade. The investigations concluded in the arrest of 20 individuals from nine countries. It's claimed that around two-thirds of all Albanian criminal leaders are hiding in the UAE. One of them was Eldi Dizdari, who is an Albanian living in Dubai. Dizdari is one of several Albanians accused of international drug trafficking who have found refuge in the UAE. Their ability to stay in the country is facilitated by buying real estate and investing in the local economy. The major criminals from the Balkans buy their safe stay by investing large amounts of money in the country by spending a lot and living a luxurious lifestyle. The only rule they have to follow is to not engage in trafficking or other criminal activities within the country, said an investigative journalist located in Albania. There are many criminals who feel so safe in the UAE that they invite family or friends to join them. Dubai has also proved attractive to the underworld because until recently it has been complicated to extradite wanted criminals from this Gulf state. In the year 2021, Dubai police arrested five criminal international drug lords from the UK, US, France and Denmark. Italy has been waiting for around 18 months for a response to its request to extradite Dizdari. At the same time, his pretrial detention period has expired, according to his Italian lawyer. Moreover, it's not only Albanian kingpins who feel at home in the UAE. According to media sources in Bosnia as well as Herzegovina, who is the leader of the notorious Tito and the Dino cartel, Edin Gassanin has been using Dubai as his home base since 2019. Known as the European Escobar, Gassanin, a Bosnian, is accused of being a major trafficker whose supply network links Latin American production markets with the Western European consumer markets. His profits have enabled him to buy property and protection since he has thus far evaded arrest. However, he has been the target of several investigations by the US Drug Enforcement Administration. Also, more than 100 members of Russia's political elite and Kremlin officials hold property in the city. The heavily sanctioned figures such as Russian businessman Ruslan Baizarov, who are close to Chechen dictator Ramzan Kadyrov, along with the first prime minister of the so-called Donetsk People's Republic, Alexander Borodai, who have been named in the investigation. Some other notorious persons of interest have also been implicated in the investigation. Among them is the Irish kingpin Daniel Kinnahan and sanctioned crypto businessman Tibor Bokor. Still in Dubai, criminals roam around in public freely, living lavish lifestyles with apparent impunity. Pictures on social media show internationally wanted criminal Miroslav Vibor, who owns a $2.7 million complex in the city, brushing shoulders with Formula One driver Charles Leclerc in a fancy Dubai restaurant. The report suggests that Dubai has almost no extradition treaties, making it a hub for wanted criminals to invest money and escape justice. The city is also on an international grey list of countries not doing much to combat international money laundering. The Flemish newspaper De Tate, one of the OCCRP's member centers in Belgium, has contributed to the Dubai Uncovered report. And with its unlimited access to the data, De Tate was able to inspect the Belgian connection to Dubai's shady real estate market. The decision of the Balkan crime bosses to relocate to Dubai is part of a wider trend. The law enforcement agencies in the EU state that the Emirates have become attractive to kingpins from different European countries as well as the United Kingdom. 
The British press has stated to buy as the new Costa del Crime, replacing Spain's infamous crime hideaway, the Costa del Sol. With so many gang bosses in a tiny place, the UAE is seen as a haven for criminals, as well as a low-risk hub for coordinating illicit activities with emissaries abroad, and an excellent place to socialize and cut new deals. In total, 745 Belgians own 1,511 properties in Dubai, according to the EU tax observatory analysis of the C4ADS data. The Tate's analysis of the data turned up some other exciting discoveries. In most cases, the properties in Dubai are legally held by ordinary private citizens from Belgium's affluent business elite. In other cases, these assets are a lot shadier. The most expensive property which is held by a Belgian is worth around $4.9 billion and spanning a vast 1,245 square meters on the city's iconic manufactured Palm Jumeirah Islands, and is owned by a man said to be money laundering in Belgium just a few years ago. This person is reported to hold nine properties in the city. At the same time, the largest Belgian owner of property in Dubai, he owns some 80 assets. He is the son of a convicted fraudster. One Belgian, who is the owner of a bankrupt pizza shop and now owns seven high-value Dubai residences. The investigations show that Dubai's hospitable and luxurious coastal properties are built upon a vast empire of European organized crime. This is mainly paid for with blood and substances. Almost one-third of Flemish partygoers have used drugs, with 3% admitting to using it many times a week. In 2017, about 4,600 seizures of substance were reported in the cities and ports of Belgium. The Belgian police registered around 58,000 drug-related crimes in the year 2018. The international cocaine trade is brutal to measure accurately. What is certain is the fact that Belgian drug lords are making so much cash that they are looking to the UAE as a haven for their ill-gotten gains. In total, Belgium's anti-money laundering has passed on 38 cases of suspected money laundering linked to Dubai to prosecutors in 2018 to 2020. The total sum of the cases is said to be worth around $480 million. One Belgian narco-trafficking couple is linked to 30 properties in Dubai, 8 villas and 22 flats, worth an estimated $18.7 million. The woman is said to own a $3 million five-bedroom villa on the shores of the world's largest artificial lagoon, and the man owns a flat a few minutes from a golf course designed by Tiger Woods. In March 2022, the global watchdog, the Financial Action Task Force, placed the country on its grey list over problems that it is not doing enough to handle illegal financial activities. The countries placed on this list should work to address strategic deficiencies in their routines to counter money laundering and terrorist financing. And just like this, anti-corruption civil society organization Transparency International stated that the UAE is a key piece in the global money laundering puzzle. Furthermore, the trend of moving to faraway markets to launder proceeds of crime shows the increased sophistication of Balkan criminals and indicates how flexible as well as business-oriented these organizations have become. Law enforcement agencies should cooperate with the country to address this problem, incorporating a holistic and long-term approach. Also, more must be done to address the dangers of integrating proceeds of crime laundered internationally back into the sensitive political economy of the Balkans. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed today's video and found it interesting, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to be always updated with the most exciting content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.